Blue Cadden at Melbourne Lake. Yeah. You can't turn away. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you're in them. Yeah, that's a little better fish. Uh-huh. Should we switch? <laughs> Up to you. If you're having fun, I'll, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll videotape you. Yeah, I'm having fun. Heck yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, that's a good fish there. That's a good fish. Wow. Now I'll let you I'll let you have that. Oh man! Yeah, that's a good one. Holy mackerel. Ralph Davis! Hey man. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, officially. Now, I know we've uh, ran in some certain circles on some different lakes, and uh, I found out that you're on the BM uh, catfish side of things. Yes, so, yes. Can I, you uh, tell me a little bit about that? Uh, oh, it's been, I've been with them for six months now, BM. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm using a lot of their catfish elite series and magnum series rods, and uh, I really like them quality stuff quality stuff yeah. yeah yeah and it looks like we've got a few yeah. of them wow yeah. and i uh i use quite a bit and i i do a little crappie fishing also you'll probably see i got a little one of the crappie rods there like you gave me for christmas yeah so yeah I, I appreciate that no problem it was fun to run into somebody else on the b m pro staff when you least expected it to so hey we've got a beautiful day here at melbourne uh the geese are flying we've got a little bit of wind and uh, what do you think about these conditions? Uh, perfect, as long as we got some wind for these blue cats, I think we'll be able to catch a few of them today. Okay, now I'm completely, have no idea about fishing Melbourne for blue cat, or fishing for blue cat, period. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've caught a lot of channel cat in my days, but uh, usually by accident, so, uh, <laughs> but you got this down, right? Yeah, hopefully, I'm hoping. Uh, we, we'll go out here and we'll try and find some ledges and see if we can't find some blue cats hanging off them ledges in 40, 50, 60 foot of water. And we'll see if we can drum up a few of them. And what kind of bait are we gonna be using? Um, we're gonna be using fresh shad. Fresh shad? Yeah. Shad yep. that are alive? Or? Uh, no, they're they're frozen a couple days old. Yeah. Uh, I caught them, uh, I think it was Friday afternoon or Friday evening. Yeah. Late and uh, uh, so we'll be using that. I got a, a little little bit of them soaked in some dead red blood spray that I use once in a while just okay. to help, help put a little more scent in the water. I got you. Dead but, red blood, blood spray. spray. Okay. Yep. I like your boat, man. It's set up wonderfully. And and uh, how are we going to be fishing for these things? Are we going to be trolling or just well, we're gonna, setting on? We're going to use the uh, spot lock on the Tarova today. Okay. And uh, we're going to fish, suspend some off the bottom. Okay. And then we're going to cast a couple rods out too and just spread them out a little bit and see where they're at and where we can get bit at. Now, just out of curiosity, um, you know, most, you know, novice catfish people, such as myself, usually always think that these fish are on the bottom. But with my experience guiding for crappie, I've run into them where they're suspended above the bottom. They're not yes, a, 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 what they would say a scavenger fish. They're more of a predator fish. Yes. Is that true? Blue cats, blue cats are probably the most aggressive out of all the catfish species that you can that you can come across, uh, especially in the wintertime. I mean, people think they get lethargic in the wintertime. It's, it's not that at all. Yeah. Uh, they can come up 10, 12 feet off the bottom sometimes and, 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 and grab baits. Uh -huh. um, and they're just constantly moving, looking for bait. Um, there's days, you know, after a good hard front comes through that they'll set on the bottom for a day or so. And, right. and they're catchable, but they're they're a harder catch that way. Yeah. Uh, but we should have we should have a good day. I mean, it's beautiful out. We've had uh, pretty steady days here the last two or three days, so we ought to get get a couple fish in the boat anyway. And how big do they get here at Melbourne? Oh man, uh, I've caught some in the 20s and I know there's some 30s and 40s in here. Really? Yeah. Really? All yeah. right, well, I'm, you might have to help me reel one of those in. I'm, <laughs> I'm used to reeling we, in those little crappie. <laughs> we can do her. Well, I'm excited. Uh, we got a beautiful day. Let's get out there and do it. Sound Sounds good? good. All right. Let's do her. Now, question off camera. Is Shatopa 
the catfish capital of the world. That's what they say. <laughs> That's what they say, and I think it's just because the river runs through there. Oh, well, and I always see people fishing there, so I bet yeah, they catch a lot of them. I know they catch a lot of spoonbill off uh, at really? Chautopa, yeah? at the dam, but... Uh, you're, you're not for certain? I've seen some flatheads come out of there, and pictures of flatheads, so so I'm, I'm not one to... Not one to knock their their, yeah. uh, their motto. Their motto. Okay, so. <laughs> it's a fifty-fifty. That's right. Okay, we'll leave yeah. it at that. Let's go catch some blue cat Melvert. Here we go. It's off a white bassy to me. Off a white bassy. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, those things are fun to catch, aren't they? Oh, they're a blast. <laughs> and I use them for bait. Yeah. 75% of the, the year. Oh, they got that oiliness in them, don't they? Is that, is that what the catfish kind of like? Yep. Yep. They like that oil. That's uh, shad this time of year is hard to beat in the wintertime. Uh, add a little bit. Now, these are some catfish down here on the bottom. Okay. And I'm sure there's some in that mess somewhere. Trying to engulf one of them uh -huh. white bass. Which a lot of times if you find fish like that on your depth finder. Yeah. Um, and you're blue cat fishing, go ahead and set up on them. Even if they might be white bass, there's going to be blue cat around them. Really? Yeah. They'll, they'll be a bunch. And here's some more bait fish right here. Okay. There's just a little depression right there, and that's where these fish are sitting. We'll make a couple passes through here, and we'll, we'll look at the, the drop-off and see if, where they're sitting at. And if they're not out here in the basin part of it, yeah. then we'll concentrate on that drop-off. Okay. If they're on the drop-off, we'll concentrate on it. But a lot of times, with the wind blowing the way it is, you can set up and you can fish the basin and throw up next to the next to the the uh, drop off there. Very cool, man. It's something uh, something rewarding and exciting about fishing with somebody that knows what they're doing. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's taken me a while to get there, uh, but. Yeah, it's, it's fun, and, and there's no sense if you don't see fish on your depth finder, I'm sure it's just like crappie fishing for you. If you don't see them on a brush pile, there's no sense in stopping. Yeah, that's true, um, but you know, the, the technology today has really kind of uh, honed the skills that you already possess, in my opinion, because sure. nothing can, uh, ex you know, nothing can ever uh, be as valuable as time spent on the water. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. And and time spent on the water is the key to, to everything and, and getting better and, and knowing where these fish set at at different times during the year. And, um, this right here is a prime example of what I'm looking for. We're going to try it. There's some bait fish and there's probably some catfish right underneath it. So we're going to mark this. Okay. And then we're going to go back to it. And we'll set up on it and we'll drop some lines down and throw some lines out and see if we can come up with a blue cat or two. Take a look at the screen.
green. Oh, that's, yeah. that's what we're set up on. That's them bait fish we just marked. Uh huh. And there should be some some catfish down there below. Nice. We're gonna go ahead and get poles out, get some bait out, get some stuff ready to go. We got some shad. Love it, love it, love it. We'll get a few of them out. And is, we got. Is that that sauce you like to? We got some shad that's uh, soaked in some dead red blood spray. Hold on, let me get a shot of that. Dead red. Okay, it gives a little color and yeah, a little... A little more scent in the water in the winter time. So that's what it looks like. Man. That's what it looks like. You let them soak in there for a little bit and it gets a little bit of scent in there. And uh, if they're not hitting the fresh shad, sometimes they'll hit that. Um, it's real good for, for frozen bait in the winter time. If you don't happen to get out and catch your own fresh, um, you can spice it up a little bit with this and nice. give it a little bit of flavor. Nice little tip there. Setup we're using, we're using uh, I got some BM Silver Cat Magnums and Silver Cat Elite seven and a half footers and eight footers. And uh -huh. uh, I love the rods, they're very durable and you can't beat them. I mean, I really like these Super Cat or Silver Cat Elites from BM. Now tell me about this uh, rigging you got going on here. This is a slip rig. Start off with a sinker slide. Uh -huh. And a two ounce, ounce and a half weight, whatever it takes for you to get it out there. Okay. And then I've got just uh, what they call a Hawaiian snap. And basically all this is, is just an easy way to get your leader off. If you break a hook or something, you can pop it off just like that. Oh, nice. And, put an, and I've already got some pre-made leaders and you just snap them right back on. What size hook are we using? Um, we're using eight Gamagatsu circle uh -huh. hooks. That looks and, like uh, it could bring some they got fish. a nice sharp point on them. Yeah. But I like using those. Um, eight aughts probably my favorite hook. Uh, you can go to a ten aught, but there's not a whole lot of difference other than the gap. Okay. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this gizzard chad and we're gonna cut him up into some pieces, and we'll take him and we'll put him on and. Some of them put it through the nose like this, uh -huh. and some of them will go through the eyes. I do either, It's it just depends on the day, I guess. But that's what they're looking for, hopefully. All right, we're gonna get it out there and see if maybe we can't get something to bite. Any preference on the reels? Uh, I use Best Pro Shops Cat Max reels. Uh -huh. um, I used Abu Garcia's for years and I love them. Uh -huh. um, the price, you know, is they're 100 to 180, 200 dollars. Um, these are good reels. They have a 24 pound drag system on them uh, for these Blue Cat and they're 70 bucks. That's nice. um, For you guys looking for a good, inexpensive reel to hold some of these 30, 40 pound catfish, this is one of them. All right. Uh, they're very hard to find right now because <laughs> they're popular. COVID! But yeah, and, and you just can't get just can't get them but uh, for the money you know good reel all right now this one here as soon as I get it off of this is the, the uh, B&M Magnum uh -huh. eight footer and I got a Kentucky rig on it now what's a Kentucky rig? A Kentucky rig is a sinker on the bottom. Okay. And then you got, you can use one hook or two hook setups. I have two hooks on here. Um, a couple more baits in the water, more scent, you know, you can, you can give it a shot. And uh, I haven't caught two on one setup yet, but, <laughs> but it'll be fun when I do. It's like uh, a drop shot rig. Yeah, and I use it a lot. I cast with it. As a matter of fact, this is the rig that I grew up with. Uh -huh. Using when I was a kid. Okay. We always had the sinker on the bottom. Um, we casted them out, and I'll cast some of these out. But I usually use this rig mainly for suspend fishing in the winter time. Okay. This one right back. I like to use this rod and the back rod holder right above the transducer because 
you can actually see it on the depth finder. Really? When they come up and get it. That's incredible. So we'll we'll just drop that straight down. Um, blue cats, you know, they'll feed from the bottom all the way up 10, 12 feet sometimes. So we're going to hit the bottom and we're going to put two cranks, three cranks on it, which is going to bring it up two, three feet off the bottom and we'll start there and see how that goes. All right. Right now, if you look back at the screen, it's just loaded. So I'm hoping we'll get some catfish to move in on these fish and bait fish and uh, here shortly. And I usually give an hour in a spot, a little over an hour sometimes. Okay. And then we'll move and we'll find a different spot if we don't get any bites. I got you. So Ralph, you're a... Uh... You're not the typical guide, would you say? Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm not the typical guide. You're kind of like a uh, saint at uh, some point, right? I mean, I, I, I don't know if I'd go that far, <laughs> but you know, uh, I just I like watching watching people catch fish. You know, it brings a smile to their face, and and uh, these kids that catch these fish are just. I mean, they're all giddy and everything the rest of the day on the boat when they catch a nice fish. And that's what I'm after. I, you know, it's not not a money issue for me. I'm a weekend weekend fisherman, and I love it. And uh, I have a full time job, so you know, I do it on Friday, Saturday, and Sundays, and I try and get as many people out as I can. And, yeah, and 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 you don't charge them a lot sometimes, if anything. Am I right? No, it's it's free if we don't catch a fish. And yeah, it's only sixty dollars a person. So yeah, kids any... fifteen and under are free. Um, you know, I, I'm not making a lot of money at it. It's just, it's just something I love to do. It's fun. It is fun. You're an ambassador to the sport because you're sharing your information and, and creating great memories. And that's, that's all the uh, fish eat live, you know, lifestyle is about is creating, you know, good times outdoors. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love it. There's uh, you know, pictures last a lifetime. Oh yeah. And them kids, you know, I had a, I had a nine year old kid lay on the floor next to a 30 pound blue cat that he had just caught <laughs> you know and i'm sure that's going to be in his his portfolio for quite a while Ooh, there's a bite right there yep on our down rod so what do we do what do we do we wait with these circle hooks uh-huh when you're using circle hooks you have to let them load the rod up okay um get a little bit of pressure on that rod let that hook turn in their mouth and then you start cranking on them and you crank six seven times until you get uh, feel the fish and feel that he's solid tension, feel the tension. and uh, yeah and get him tight and then just take it out of the rod holder if you can get it out of the rod holder <laughs> sometimes uh, it's hard you know I've, several kids you know 15 and under have a hard time getting these rods out of the rod holder when you got a fish that's got some pressure on your rod okay and that's a fun part too i, I love watching them try and do that so but we should should be getting some bites here pretty soon hopefully okay oh look at that there he goes again Oh, there you go. So we don't do anything, don't huh? Don't do anything yet. Oh, it's <laughs> killing me. I got to set that hook. <laughs> you you got to wait until he gets the little bow in the rod and gets his consistent pressure on there. Okay. And then All we'll right. get him. I'm very, very birdy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome. I think we got one on. There we go. Fish on. Fish on. And a little word of wisdom. Yeah. In 60 foot of water in the winter time, because the water's so cold, you got to bring these fish up slow. So you don't kill them. So you don't kill them. Okay. Um, their air bladder fills up and they have to decompress. It's just like a diver. Okay. Um,
nine, ten pounder. Beautiful. Pretty good. Deal. All right, now how do we like to cook these? Uh, I usually cook them, uh, put a little olive oil, get you some aluminum foil, lay it out on the counter, put a little olive oil on it, uh, put your fish on there, put a little olive oil over the top of your fish. You don't have to use a lot of olive oil, just a little bit. Uh -huh. um, put some lemon pepper okay. uh, seasoning on it and some paprika, and some people squirt a little lemon juice on it too if they want. Okay. Um, and then take another piece of aluminum foil and encase it, uh -huh. and then poke a couple holes in it, and you can put it on your grill for five or ten minutes, or you can bake it in the oven at 350, uh, and man, they're delicious. Just baked fish, huh? Yep, just baked fish. With a little olive oil. Yep. All right, I'm going to give that a shot now. Let me know how it turns out. Oh, I bet it turns out delicious. <laughs> now, do you just cook a fillet or do you cook a, in cubes? I've seen people cube them out. Um, you, you can leave them in fillets if you want. I cube them out sometimes. Uh -huh. uh, um, you can take the fillet and actually cut it in into two inch wide pieces uh -huh. and leave it like that, uh, strips. Um, yeah, you can do it either way. Any tricks on cleaning them? Um, no, I fillet all my catfish out that I keep, um, and I don't keep a lot of fish most of the time, but right. I'll take and fillet the side off of them, starting from the head back to the tail, and then flip the tail over just like you do a crappie, and okay. and uh, fillet it right off the off the skin. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Pretty, pretty basic, pretty simple, same, same procedure as crappie. Oh, jeez. There, take the camera off, I got it. Oh, oh crank cool. on him pretty good. Get that hook in him. There you go. Now bring your rod tip down. Perfect. That little look might be a better fish there. Yeah. <laughs> Blue Cadden at Melbourne Lake. Yeah. You can't turn away. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you're in them. Yeah. yeah, that's a little better fish. switch <laughs> up to you if you're having fun i'll i'll, I'll, I'll videotape you yeah i'm having fun heck yeah oh my goodness oh yeah that's a good fish there that's a good one that's a good fish wow. now i'll let you I'll let you have that oh, oh man yeah that's a good one holy mackerel Wow. I can't believe that. I'm kind of in shock. 
Just bang, bang, bang. All right. Three let's... fish. How, how big is that let's one? Let's see how much he weighs. Okay. Oh, you're going to have big fish of the day. What's that? 11 pounds, 5 ounces. 11 pounds, 5 ounces. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous specimen of the blue cat here in Melbourne. Ralph Davis, thank you so much, my man. That is no a problem. good time. Hey, what's, uh, if they want to get a hold of you and do something like this in the winter, summer, spring, well, what's a good way of them contacting you? 620-432-3341 uh, uh, or check out my Facebook page, RD Guide Service. B&M Pro Staffer Ralph Davis and beautiful Melvern Blue Cat. Thank you, my friend. Hey, anytime, anytime. Thank you so much for watching Fish, Eat, Live. Our mission is to demonstrate the benefits of the Fish, Eat, Live lifestyle. We look forward to educating, entertaining, and attracting you to the healthy lifestyle of the great outdoors. We're definitely going to have some wholesome family fun on the water every Sunday at 6 p.m. So hit that subscription and that notification bell because we want you to come be a part of this.